Hello, I'm Tom McQuillan and in this module we're going to go through an introduction to test-driven development. By the end of this module we should be able to implement the concepts of test-driven development or TDD for short in your LabVIEW applications. So test-driven development or TDD is an industry recognized software development process that translates requirements into specific test cases. Then the code is developed so the tests pass. Kent Beck the person credited with developing TDD says, TDD encourages simple design and inspires confidence. It's called test-driven development as testing is at the forefront of the technique. As soon as we get the software requirements, we write tests that will only pass if the requirements are met. So once we have written the tests, we must make sure they all fail. This is to ensure we don't miss any requirements due to a false positive. If a test passes at this stage, it's also an indication that the test isn't comprehensive enough. Once we're confident the tests capture all of our requirements, it's time to start coding. And once we've finished a unit of code, we should run the test to see how many requirements have met. If they have all been met, then we can move on to the next module of code. And this will prevent feature creep. We can repeat this process until all the tests pass and that way we know that all of the requirements have been met. There are many benefits for using TDD. For this module I've picked out my top 5. At number 1 we have proof that the requirements have been met. As each requirement is mapped with a test or sets of tests, as soon as the test starts to pass we can prove that the requirement has been met. At number 2 we have increased focus and productivity. TDD helps us focus on one piece of functionality at a time and this allows us to develop software in an ordered fashion. At number 3 we have living documentation and examples of how to use the code that won't go out of date. This is particularly helpful as traditionally as soon as you make changes to your code you then have to update the documentation. However, with TDD, the tests themselves can act as the documentation. At number 4, we have tidier code. Testable code modules are doing fewer things and are therefore more straightforward to understand. Even at number 5, maintainable code. As we have tests for all of our code already, we can refactor the code and be confident the code still works provided the tests still pass. I was working on a project recently where I had to develop an API that could convert between different string formats that didn't use the space character. In this API I had to convert strings between camel, pascal, snake and kebab case. And with this API I used test driven development and I'll share with you my workflow. So I've created a modified version of the requirements document for you to review and about halfway down I've listed 8 functions that need to be created and I've given an example of what these functions must be able to do. So to follow through test driven development I should now create tests, however first I'm going to create stub VIs in this library that I can create tests against. In this library I've created the 8 VIs and you can see how the names match those with the requirements and if I open up one of these VIs, although I've completed a front panel of input string, output string and errors and have connected them to the connector pane, if we look on the block diagram I've completed zero functionality. Because I've now created these stub VIs I'm going to use the unit test framework to create unit tests for them. And to create a unit test using the unit test framework I can select all of the VIs, right click and then select new unit tests. Doing that has added these LV tests to the library. However, because I don't want to package all of these tests with the library itself, I'm going to click and drag them outside of the library and add them to a unit test virtual folder. Now that we've created these test files, we can open them up and create some test cases. Now in this walkthrough I'm using the unit test framework that comes with LabVIEW Professional, however there are many testing frameworks for you to choose from and there will be other modules featuring other frameworks as well as some links in the description. So spend some time finding a testing framework that suits you. Now in this particular unit test I've already created some test cases. For example in this test case I'm testing to see what happens if we don't enter any values. So if in input string I enter an empty string I expect to get an empty string out. In the next test case, 
I'm testing the errors. So if I enter error 600, I expect to get error 600 back out, and I want an empty string out, even if I enter hello world as a string. In the case after that, I've named that case standard. So this should be the standard functionality where I can convert camel case, which we see here, into a standard string. The next case along is a long standard case where I enter a long string, you then see if the function can convert it back into a string with spaces. And the test case after that is an unexpected string, where I enter camel case, but that camel case has some spaces in it. The function should be able to account for this and return a warning of 5000 and a converted string. So once we've completed all of the test cases for all of these unit tests, we should run them. And the reason why we run them is to make sure there aren't any false positives which could lead to missing requirements. Also, if any of these tests do pass, it indicates that the tests aren't comprehensive enough. From the window on the screen, we can see that all eight tests failed and we have a red dot next to all of these in our project. So the next step is to actually write some functionality in these VIs. I've now completed the functionality for the eight public VIs, but in doing that, I created eight private sub VIs. Now I haven't created unit tests for these private VIs because they will all be tested indirectly by the public functions that all have associated tests. To ensure I've met all the requirements for a particular function, I should now run its unit test. And using the unit test framework, I can do that by right clicking and selecting run. And you can see that this test was passed, the camel case the standard.lv test. And I got a green tick next to that unit test. But I can also run all of these tests by clicking run unit tests. Perfect, so here we can see that all of our tests passed and therefore I know I've completed all the requirements for this API. Here are some top tips to get started with test-driven development. If you have an existing project and you want to migrate to using TZD, instead of creating tests and refactoring all of your code at once, as this could be time consuming, you should create tests and follow TDD for all new modules of code. Then, whenever you come across a bug, you should create a test that covers that code module to prove that that bug has been fixed. Then over time, testing coverage for the project will grow, starting with the most critical or vulnerable parts. For new applications, start by designing the APIs for the application. APIs are typically more straightforward to write tests for. Then, as proficiency grows, you will naturally find yourself following test-driven development for the whole project. And lastly, in this module, we looked at the unit test framework. However, I would encourage you to experiment with different testing frameworks to find a tool that best suits you. Here are some great resources to learn more about test-driven development. If you prefer videos, there's one by Sam Taggart all about a practical approach to TDD and a series of videos by Control Software Solutions about unit testing in LabVIEW. If books suit you better, here are my suggestions, including test-driven design by example, by Kent Beck, who was mentioned earlier, and Lavi Graphical Programming by Richard Jennings and Fabiola Della Cueva. There are also white papers available on the NI website. And lastly, all of the code demonstrated is available for you to download, and I've split the source code into steps. I would recommend starting at step one and going through the TDD process using the provided requirements document. And if you get stuck, you can refer back to the video or use the provided code as an example solution. In this module, we went through an introduction to test-driven development. By now, you should have a good understanding of what TDD is and how it can be implemented. But for more information, refer to the resources given.